Okay. I remember when I was um, volunteering in a high school at my church, and, and I was struggling with how do I teach high schoolers about sex, okay? And so it was very easy to say, black and white, that you should not engage in sex before you're married, okay? That was easy. But there are a lot of things before that that you could do, and I was struggling. How does the Bible teach, the, teach it? And it teaches through wisdom. If you do, it's, there are things that are better to do, and there are things that are worse to do. And if you engage in things that are worse to do, they get you in trouble. Does that make sense? Okay. And so the Bible actually has a large body of, of literature that teaches you how to deal with most of the decisions in your life, the better and worse. Okay. By the way, there's a third category, I believe, of decisions in which you can do anything you want. It really isn't, doesn't matter. For example, whether you should wear blue or, or red today, whether you should wear sneakers or, sh or uh, dress shoes, right? Whether you should comb your hair this way or that way, that's up to you, okay? Those are decisions, that's kind of the third class of decisions. So wisdom gives you this, teaches you this area of better and worse, okay? Now, <clears throat> I'll give you another, another reason why wisdom is so important is if you look, if you, if you scan the Bible in the area of suffering, one of the things you'll realize about suffering is that not all suffering is the same, right? There is a suffering because of the fallen nature of man, of, of mankind, humankind. And that is the class of suffering like through sickness, hurricanes, earthquakes, and those kind of things, um, it will happen, right? We, 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 we learn to bear with that, and, uh, and we have hope for the future, right? There's another class of suffering where we suffer for doing what is right. And that if you read in James, it says, consider it joy if you suffer for my sake, Right? So there, there's a type of suffering where if you, you do the right thing, you're going to suffer for it. Okay? Now, there's a third class of suffering that is a direct result of stupid decisions that you make. <laughs> okay? You make some stupid decisions. You make some, some decisions that are not good, and you will suffer for it. So there is a whole class of suffering that you can avoid if you are wise. Does that make sense? Now, not all suffering is going to be caused by this, but there's a whole class of it that you can avoid if you make smart, wise decisions and not be a fool. Okay? Now, <clears throat> um, When I first started looking at Proverbs, this was years ago, it was a difficult thing for me to read because if you read Proverbs, it's not organized in a way that, that like a narrative or a teaching of, of Paul. Matter of fact, it's kind of the opposite. It's these little snippets, these little snippets of, of, uh, of, of wisdom, right? And, but they're not organized. They're, you, you, they jump from place to place, you know? And I was an engineer, and I had this engineering mind, and it was driving me crazy that I, could, that, that I, would, I would kind of flutter from topic to topic. And I, and I just put down Proverbs, and I didn't really like it, okay? So I thought, I got to really get my head around this. So one of the things I noticed about Proverbs is that, that there are archetypes in it, like the fool, okay, uh, the wise. There are things like, um, I really like this one, the sluggard, right? The sluggard, and we'll, we'll cover that one, okay? There, are, there is the mocker, the simple, 
There's the righteous. There's the good friend. There's the gossip. There is the wicked. Okay, there are these, these archetypes. And so I, I got my concordance out and I started to gather uh, like uh, all, the, all the passages in Proverbs around that archetype. Okay, and guess what? I started, it, it, it was more to my Western engineering mind. I began to say, is there some really good stuff here? Okay. All right. So I got this process of learning where I can look at verses and read it in context and gain from it. And it was, it was just amazing what I learned. So this is what I'm going to share with you, how I was able to glean and learn from Proverbs, okay? And I, it's, I think it's unique. Uh, if you kind of go to look up any commentary, so I bought up a bunch of commentaries. I never found any commentary that quite does it this way, okay? So if I ever write a book, it's going to be on Proverbs, okay? <laughs> All right. Okay, so, um, uh, okay, so let's, so what I'm going to do this week is we'll go over the first one. It's the fool. Okay. We're going to talk about the fool and I'll show you how I kind of pulled together verses on the fool using a concordance and what we learn from it. Okay. So uh, notice no slides. Okay. We're going to use this handout. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> okay. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools, but the but the fool despises wisdom and discipline. How long will you will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? So the first thing you want to know about fools are they're arrogant. Okay, they think they know and they don't. Okay, they're arrogant. You see that? Okay, first thing. Okay, let's read on. A fool spurns his father's discipline, but whoever heeds correction shows prudence. The way of a fool seems right to him, but a wise man listens to advice. Do not speak to a fool, for he will scorn the wisdom of your words. So the second thing we know about a fool is they, they hate correction. They can't be corrected. Okay, now you probably are starting to drum up people in your mind, right? <laughs> Don't tell me who they are, okay? But one of the things about wisdom and learning about the fool is we begin to be able to spot it in other people and in ourselves, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, as we read on... Pictures of people are going to come into your mind and, and uh, of people who are fools, okay? Okay, a fool finds no pleasure in understanding, but delights in airing his own opinion. He who trusts in himself is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom keeps it safe. So, fools are people who talk a lot. They chatter. They stay. They like to hear themselves. They think they're so smart and wise, and they just they 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 just talk. They're incessant talkers. Okay, so that's a characteristic of a fool. They don't listen. They talk. And 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 it even says that they put themselves in danger. Okay, fools. A fool will put themselves in danger because they are going in ways they're not learning from, from their experience and they, and they start to, to be a harmful to themselves and to the others around them. Okay? That's a fool. Okay, let's read on. As a dog returns to his vomit... So a fool repeats his folly. I can't get that image out of my head, okay? Any of you, any of you who are dog owners know what this is talking about, right? Dogs have this gross thing, right? So, um, okay, but this idea is they repeat. They continually repeat 
doing foolish things. They don't learn. Okay. Of what use is money in the hands of a fool? Since he has no desire to get wisdom, they squander the resources they have. A fool finds pleasure in evil conduct, but a man of understanding delights in wisdom. So, they, so a fool repeats their folly. Okay? All right. So already I, I think you see this is kind of helpful, right? Okay. All right. Fool and his speech. Wise men store up knowledge, but the mouth of a fool invites ruin. The wise in heart accepts commands, but a chattering fool to ruin. The tongue of the wise commends knowledge, but the mouth of the fool gushes folly. Again, a fool talks too much. Okay. Um, so you can probably start picturing people and experiences in your life where either you or somebody else said things that you would like to take back or have, have said things that are very hurtful or harmful that you shouldn't have said. And that is the mark of a fool. Okay. Now, remember what I said before. We all start off stupid people right? We have to grow in wisdom. And one of the things that we learn about wisdom is we have to uh, be careful about the things we say. That makes sense? Okay. That's the mark of a wise person. They're able to rein in their tongue. Okay. Better a poor man who, whose walk is blameless than a fool whose lips are perverse. So a fool distorts the truth. They distort the truth. He who conceals his hatred has lying lips, and whoever split, spreads slander is a fool. A fool spreads slander, lies about other people. Okay. It is to, to a man's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. That is interesting, right? So a fool has a short temper, okay? And uh, if you are quick and, and quickly getting angry, you will be a fool, all right? <clears throat> a fool shows his annoyance at once, but a prudent man overcomes an insult. So a fool is easily insulted, easily quick, quick tempered. And, and, uh, and, but a prudent man, it says a prudent man, a wise person is able to, uh, bear with insults, right? They don't react, uh, in anger quickly. <clears throat> okay. So, so far, pretty good advice. Don't you think? Okay, good advice to us. You can probably already look to yourself and say, gee, I'm one of these people, okay? Uh, whether it's quick-tempered or I need to watch my mouth, okay? Or learn from my mistakes, okay? A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son grief to his mother. To have a fool for a son brings grief. There is no joy for the father of a fool. So one of the things that a fool does is they grieve the people who love, who, who love them the most. Does that make sense? You love a fool and they bring you grief. Okay. Um, and because you love them so much and you see them doing things that are, are really dumb right, are really stupid, are really foolish, okay? And so they bring grief to those who love them. And so in this context, it's the family, right, the parents of a child. Um, but it's really anyone who you love that is displaying foolish behavior. You just, you just grieve in your heart. 
right? Whether it be a, a friend or a sibling or whatever. Okay. All right. Now, um, when I started looking at wisdom, uh, so in the Old Testament, anyone know where do we find wisdom? Where do we find this learning of better and worse? Where do we learn, find it? Yes. Proverbs, definitely. And we're going through Proverbs. Psalms. Did you know that there are a number of Psalms? So Psalms is a mix, right? But there are a number of Psalms that are, are, are in the lines of wisdom. Psalms 1 would be an example, right? It talks about a tree planted on good ground and a tree that's not. Okay, that's, that's kind of wisdom literature for you to think about. Okay, there's another. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Okay, yes, there's some wisdom in there. Um, Ecclesiastes, I mentioned, is wisdom. Is, it teaches you how to be wise, right? Um, Songs of Solomon, I don't understand, guys. So that, that's a tough one for me. It's a tough one for me. Uh, but uh, I'll get there someday. Um, but Job. Okay, what does Job teach you about? S suffering, right? Suffering. It teaches you a lot about suffering. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a hard read. I mean, it's kind of like you read the first part and then you read the middle and then the end, right? It's 30 something chapters. Um, but uh, I was thinking maybe we'll tackle that one, okay, Job, because it has a lot of wisdom about suffering. Job is the, if you look at the Old Testament, Job is probably the, the earliest of all the things written in the Old Testament, is Job. And the first topic that, that, that is tackled, suffering. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, so that's wisdom and literature. Now, is there any wisdom literature in the New Testament? Huh? Say again? The letters? No, not really. That's more teaching. Jesus, right? So, so, so par some of the parables speak of wisdom, doesn't it? Do you remember this parable? If you, if you build your house on sand or if you build your house on rock, right? What is that? That's wisdom, wisdom literature. It's a wisdom parable. Do you remember this one about uh, bigger barns, you know, where this, this guy, uh, got a crop and extra and he built this barn and he said, oh, now I can eat, drink and be merry. I'm paraphrasing, right? And he said this fool, 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 right? He uses the word fool. This very night, your life will be taken from you, right? And then it's basically, you can't take it with you. What is that? That's wisdom. That's wisdom literature. You see it? Okay. Um, somebody over there? Yes. There you go. Okay. So if you read, what is the New Testament equivalent of Proverbs? James. If you read James, you'll see these ideas that are stuck all over the place, right? You kind of flitter from topic to topic. And it's written in the style of Proverbs. So James is the New Testament uh, equivalent of Proverbs. Isn't that interesting? I bet you never thought about that, but yes, it is, okay? Wisdom, the, the, the trajectory of wisdom literature is, is from Old Testament to New, okay? It's all there, okay? Now, I was reading the other day, I was reading Ephesians 1, and in Ephesians 1, there's this magnificent first passage about what you have in Christ and the work of Christ in salvation. And then right after that, there's a prayer. Okay, so Paul is going to pray for the people after he tells them the magnificent work of salvation. Uh, what, what is the thing that he's going to pray about? Do you know? It's remarkable what he prays. Okay. He prays that you will know God, that you will know God through the Spirit giving you wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and revelation. So I go, wow, wisdom, okay? Wisdom, the idea that God imparts in us wisdom through teaching and learning how to be uh, make good decisions 
and revelation through uh, the Holy Spirit guiding you and pushing you and giving you, uh, teaching you how to do. So wisdom is not something you just learn, that you, you just go it on your own. It's helped by the activation, by the work of the Holy Spirit inside your heart. Okay, amazing. Wisdom is all over the place. Okay, so it's a lifelong pursuit, guys, right? Um, now, I have some questions for you to kind of think about um, that, that you can kind of think at home. What qualities of a foolish person is most striking to you as you read this, right? And how can you become more wise in your speech and conduct? Okay, that's your homework assignment, okay? Think about that. Now, wisdom is immensely practical, isn't it? We are going to be on a road of practical learning for the next 12 weeks, okay? And, um, and so, um, I want to leave you with this, that first verse, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, and I'm going to substitute wisdom. Really, the beginning, uh, if, if you do not fear the Lord, if you do not respect him, if you do not fall under his banner, you will be a fool. Okay. And so one of the, one of the first steps of being a wise person is to, is to submit yourself to the Lord, to come to Christ, to accept him, and then and, and you will be on the road to wisdom. Okay? Um, next week, we're going to be talking about two people, the mocker and the simple. Okay, we're going to talk about the mocker and the simple. And we'll just walk through Proverbs as what it says about the mocker and the simple. And I put them together because the mocker, because they kind of go together. The simple gets fooled by the mocker. Okay. Right. That's how they, that's how it works. Okay. I'll give you a, a little more teaser here. A mocker is a person who makes right wrong and wrong right. Right. They manipulate you into thinking right is wrong and wrong is right by mocking Okay, guess what? There's a lot of examples of that today. Okay, lots of examples. I won't go into them. Okay, just like I don't want to hear the foolish people in your life. Okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, so uh, let's pray. And uh, again, if you give me your email address, I'll be sending you a teaser every week. Okay, all right, let's pray. Lord, we, we thank you that you give us a way of thinking that helps us with most of the decisions in our lives, that we be people who choose the better, not the worse, that we learn wisdom and we make it a lifelong pursuit in our lives. Thank you that, that although we all start off as foolish people, that you want us to be wise. You want us to make smart choices in life. You want us to value, peop, uh, value this, and you impart that in us um, through Scripture, through our experiences, and through the Holy Spirit. Um, really, in these few weeks that we have, as we learn together wisdom, uh, really infuse it in us so that we will be people who others will say they are wise. They are wise people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, we'll see you next week. And uh, we'll talk about mocker and the simple. All right.